How about that? How about that? Yo. Sweet the we mix good. How about that? What up guys? Um this is a back day and bicep day pool day. Um this was an awesome day for me because I hit a couple of PRs since I've been out of the hospital. Um everything that I say PR wise is, is since I've been in the hospital, uh, out of the hospital. So um it, it's kinda like you have to reset every single time that you, you have to you, you come out of the hospital because you're you know, usually for me, for me specifically, I'm, I'm a low body weight, um, you know, and I, I lose a lot of strength. But um, here I'm doing, I did, I believe this is a 275 for one, just to see how it felt. Because I think I've done this before since I've been out of the hospital, I'm not sure. Um, but I'm pretty sure that I, I got that one time. And it was, went up pretty easy. It was kind of ugly, but that was okay. Um, dad was sticking kind of a, with a little bit of a lighter weight today for him, um, 315 and he did, uh, he did five by fives with these, um, making it look easy. It's fantastic. Um, so yeah, and then, and then I, I try 315 and this is the, uh, this is the PR I get. It's kind of, you know, kind of sloppy a little bit, but, um, I got it and I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, there it is. So, and then I <clears throat> I decided to drop back down because all I was doing is just pretty much one reps all the way up to 315. So, <clears throat> I did 225 uh for one set of of 5 and that's also uh PR for me, so um yeah. <clears throat> Today went well for my lower back. And I haven't done, uh, we haven't done deadlifts in, in so long. Um, it's been a couple of months, pro well, about a month and a half since we've done deadlifts. I think the first week that I was out of the hospital, we did deadlifts. That was the, that was the first time that we, we've done them. Um, and these are called pendulay rows, which I really, really, really like. Um, <clears throat> I really feel it, uh, you know, the stretch at the bottom and, and, the contraction at the top, um, it really just uh, zeroes in on on your back. Excuse me, guys. I have something uh, <laughs> something going on with my voice. Um, then we moved on to uh, a, a form of a pull down, a, a wide grip pull down. We were going to do the neutral grip pull downs, but um, instead we tried this out. Um, kind of pulling to, to our, our sternum, um, I felt it pretty good. I'm still a little bit sore, and this is a couple days after. I'm still a little bit sore. And I, I've also been doing a lot of moving also, so that probably didn't help the soreness. But, and then we moved on to uh, some you know, strict barbell curls. Uh, didn't really go, didn't go heavy at all on these. Um, I think I went up a little bit, but not a whole lot. Um, then we moved on to um, inclined dumbbell curls, alternating dumbbell curls. We did this, <clears throat> and uh, we did three sets of this, three sets of 12, I believe, and then we did a triple drop set, seven, 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 uh, meaning we started with a higher weight, worked our way down, um, and we ended with uh, these rope curls, these uh, hammer rope curls, uh, which I felt it pretty good. Um, yeah, I feel it, you know, it really works. It w helps work on your brachialis. And this is us stretching our lower backs out because it started to really, my, I started to really feel uh, my lower back get really weak. 
<laughs> Let, let's touch on one other thing while we're while we're doing this, and then you can just cut put this together. Okay. Um, I want to I want to just take a minute also to talk about training protocols and training approaches. Okay. There's so many different ways to skin a cat. There, there there's so many different ways to to get this done. And and you know what what happens in the fitness community a lot of times is is we debate over what is the optimal training protocol what you know what rep range uh, eludes the most or, or elicits the most hypertrophy or you know strength gains or whatever and and I think it's all relative again it, it needs to be something that you enjoy uh, if you enjoy it you're gonna work harder at it if you work harder at it you're gonna make progress uh, progress is a derivative of hard work you know you know of course you want to be intelligent about your training but there, there's a bunch of different training approaches that will will benefit you but the one that won't is the one that you dread doing because you're not going to put the, the effort into it that you would otherwise okay uh, and, and that that even carries over from the weight room to your cardio you know th there's a lot out there about fasted cardio non-fasted cardio about um, hit versus steady state cardio uh, we at JM Fitness like to combine hit and uh, uh, low intensity steady state cardio because um, the hit is performance inducing it's it's going to help your vo2 max it's going to help your numbers and you know um, if you're doing this the way we advocate doing it you're doing it for your health too it's aesthetic but it's all also athletic so you want to be able to do things that are going to help your health so is hit better uh, can you quantify it and say hit is better than than you know low intensity steady state cardio or is the other one better? I think it's all relative. It's what you prefer. This is what I know from me personally. I can't do hit back to back to back to back to back like that. It becomes a drain because when you're doing if you're doing hit cardio the way it's intended to be done. Every time you do it, you're you're trying to beat the number before, and if you do that, it, it it really becomes stressful and it really becomes taxing on your central nervous system, and it's gonna in the long run affect your your performance in the weight room, and the weight room is the primary thing. That's the muscle builder, fat burner. The cardio is secondary to the weights. Okay, so um, yeah, you know, doing a combination of hit and list, I think, is the best approach. But again, it, it depends on your personality. If you're one of those people that can just go after it as hard as you can go after it every single day, I mean, I'm not one of those, but if you're one of those, more power to you. Stick with the hit. If you're one of these people that, that you're so drained by the end of the day, but you need to get your cardio in, you know, Turn on the TV, get on a treadmill, walk at about three and a half miles an hour, maybe three or four degree incline, and you know, take 30 to 45 minutes to get it done. The, the point is do it. You know, what, it doesn't matter which protocol you use. If you're, if you're getting up and moving, you're, you're moving forward. So, um, but you know, again, a balance of trying to find the right way to do it is, is uh, what we advocate but you know that that may be different for different people i mean we've had clients that that absolutely love hit and that's what they want to do and you can get amazing progress doing hit it's it's muscle sparing if you do it in a very limited time frame um some people prefer doing you know low intensity steady state cardio that's fine too it, it, it really it, it's it takes more time to get that done but it's not as invasive on your on your nervous system and on your recuperative ability for when you get back in the gym doing doing the weight so I just I just wanted to touch on that too fasted non fasted it's it's preference you know you can have one study that'll say you burn more fat doing it fasted and another study will contradict that and say no you burn more calories if you have you know some some amino acids in your in your bloodstream and and some some food in you uh, prior to personally I like doing fasted cardio I, I don't feel like I'm gonna throw up if I don't have anything in my stomach if I try to do hard cardio after I've eaten then I, I just feel like a water buffalo so 
Uh, that's my preference. That's the way I'm going to do it. It's worked for me. I've gotten pretty good condition in the past doing that. But either way, don't get wrapped around the smoke about, spoke about the small things. Work hard and, and you know, find something that you really enjoy and you'll, you'll prosper in it. I mean, that's, you know, that's the way we uh, advocate doing it. And, and, you know, if you're not working with us, if you're working with someone else and that, that coach isn't willing to listen to you and, and, you know, when you say, well, I prefer this over that, I mean, there, there has to be some flexibility and bend in the system because they're helping you. And, and if, if they're giving you something that you absolutely disdain, you're not going to stick with it. So they're not helping you. So you have to, you know, whoever you're working with, make sure that uh, that person, uh, you're able to have an open dialogue with them and say, you know, I'm not trying to get out of work. I've been coached myself, so I know how this goes. I'm not trying to get out of work, but I, I personally feel that doing this is causing me to go catabolic and I'm, I'm losing muscle, and that's not my goal. <clears throat> and if you have a coach and you're telling that to them because you know your body and they're not listening to you, then you, know, you, you may want to consider other options at that point. But anyway, I hope some of this information helps you. It's good stuff, man. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, talk to you guys soon. Hey, Charlie Mike, continue your mission.